Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Working in my studio this morning and um, looking at a snow scene. We've had lots of snow recently, so decided to um, look at a particular subject. Um, and it's Willie Lott's house down at Flatford Mill. Now, I used to teach there uh, for many years and um, seen that the, the Willie Lott's house in all different seasons. Um, but I've decided to paint it as a snow scene uh, this morning. So I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you do, please subscribe. Just click on the logo in the bottom right hand corner and you will receive notifications when I upload more videos. I hope you enjoy and uh, let's get started. Well here we go then, Willie Lott's house um, at Flatford Mill, world famous Constable Country. John Constable, one of the um, most coveted English painters. And um, this is a pencil drawing of that cottage. Some of you that's been down there may uh, have already um, have uh, are familiar with Willie Lott's cottage and or Willie Lott's house as it's called. Um, we've got the mill pool there, got the building, got trees on either side. Put in a simple um, pencil sketch um, of the basic form. Now this is going to be a snow scene so we need to set the scene for that. So I'm going to start off, I've just damped all my colours in the normal way. I'm going to start off using a number four mop brush. It's got a bit of a point to it and um, uh, I'm going straight in. It's only a small uh, 11 by 15 sheet of Canson paper. Yeah, in this case, it's the not surface wood pulp paper. Nothing too expensive. Um, and... First thing I'm going to do is put the sky in. I'm going to use Windsor Blue for the sky. And I'm going to be quite strong with the sky because quite often in the winter you get these snow scenes and because the snow is so bright then quite often the sky looks very dark. Uh, it's just a contrast really. I'm going to have the light coming from the right so I'm going to put the darker of the colour on the left hand side. Now I'm thinking about any cloud work. It would be nice to have a little bit of cloud. And also um, what you must remember when you're painting a snow scene is that anything you leave Anything you want white snow, you have to leave. So this makes it a little more difficult when you come to paint, uh, rather than using white. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the brush now. That's my blue sky. And where, just remove a little bit of colour, where I'm going to have the tree, I'm going to use a lightly damped brush and just pull in, that's where the tree will be. And you could begin to see the snow on the branches of that tree. And same this side as well, that's where another tree will be. There we are. And that's the start of the snow. And also a tree in the distance, there. And some of that may run down there that's the way you produce the start of that impression. Okay, um, actually not going to have any cloud in this one. So it's just going to be nice dark blue. So I'm going to be a little bit deeper with the blue there, particularly around the top of that tree and around the top of that tree. It just shows off where the tree ends and the sky finishes. That's what this is really all about. Looks a bit like a night scene really but there you go and that just shows the top of that tree. Now obviously the edge of that tree will be important too and then we come down as far as the chimney and paint around the chimney. 
So that is vital too. And all of a sudden we begin to see the trees with snow on revealed. That's not a difficult thing to achieve, but I would say that for obvious reasons, for any of you new painters out there, you may wish to um, do a study of a sky with a, some winter trees like that to try and achieve a similar effect. No one will ever get the same effect, uh, and I wouldn't get the same effect if I did it next next time. Um, but that's basically um, the basic principle. Bit, bit of red going in the sky. Can I put drop that in there? A little bit of sort of cloud work coming up. A bit of a dullness and a little bit of red here. A little bit of dominance red. It's always nice to have that to give these sort of sort of dull clouds. It's a greyish day, for instance, but we do have a little bit of um, a warmth in those clouds, so the, the slightly red um, tint to that. Now because I've had red uh, in the sky, I always feel that it's nice to give this snow a little bit of warmth, a little tint of warm colour. Now. Because I've used Indian red in the sky, didn't tell you that, but I'm going to use a little bit of Indian red for the snow. But with that Indian red, I'm adding a little yellow. So I've got sort of like a, a dull Indian red, a bit more Indian red, a bit more yellow, a dull sort of orangey colour and the render to start with will be that colour the render of the frontage of the building so I'm going to paint that in first so let's not overload the brush too much so let's get that in first always be aware where there's snow maybe a little build up of snow on these um, couple of wooden beams that go across the gable end there Maybe a little bit of snow on those. Other than that, a little bit on the sills perhaps. Oh, and there's a bush there. So that would have snow on it. So I've always got to be aware of that. There we go. Sit and do that gable end next. Notice I'm painting around the windows. That is uh, quite important. Leave those white. Oh, and there's an area there. Two. These will probably be in shadow, and then we have the sunlit side. So let's be a little bit, try and be a little bit lighter with that. Come down like that. That's a sunlit area. So is that. Got the good old chimney breast. There's a shrub there that's white, so we'll leave that. Um, so that's pretty much the front of the cottage. Now the snow. Now this is where we need to be a little bit weaker. Uh, touch of red in that just to give it the warmth be very very weak don't want to be too strong with that um, and I'm going to put a little bit not too much water on the brush for that uh, I'm gonna sort of, like, there's, it's sort of like a track here let's put a little bit in the lower part of that tree too there we are put a little bit in the lower part of that tree a little bit here and there in in the that's it, there we are, where those trees will be, and a little bit there. Right, now we have the track that runs around to the other part of the mill. Then we just have a little bit of this colour, just dotted around. Oh, mustn't forget to have a little bit of this colour on the roof. It's always nice to have a bit of this sort of colour knocking around within the snow just gives it a little feel of, um, of warmth really because snow scenes you know you don't want to completely cold snow scenes um, it's only very only lightly tinted but um, it's it's there just gently tinted 
just adjust to the camera because I think you can see that better like that. Now while I'm uh, in this position, um, I've got to allow the sky to dry and, and the, the underpainting to dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the water in. Now the water is just going to reflect the sky really. So I'm going in where I've had the water. And there again, normally when you've got snow on a bank, the, the, the water, because the snow is a very light contrast, always looks darker. You get greenery, the, sky, the, the water would appear slightly lighter. So I'm going to use the raw sienna, a little bit of Indian red again. Sorry, not raw sienna. A little bit of Indian red and Windsor blue. But to that, I'm going to use raw sienna. Because I want that sort of greeny grey that you get on a snow scene. In the, snow, in the water of a snow scene. And I've been quite dark along where the bank is. But of course, where that uh, reflects a little bit of the tree, I'm opening up that. So I'm just sneaking across the, the water like that. Give that sort of icy cold water effect. That's really what we're, what we're, we're looking for. And this, we've got the old dead rushes and planting along the edge that stands up there. So I'm painting back in and lifting off to try and indicate some rough edges. I think that would probably do as the first washers within the, for this uh, lovely little snow scene. Good. Well, I've allowed the, that to completely dry. Um, sky is nice and dry now and uh, the water that's pretty much uh, um, what the uh, um, what I um, sort of thought would suit this particular scene and as you notice once everything dries off it does get uh, it does dry off at least a tone or two lighter so never be afraid to put a strong color if you're looking for dark go dark you know, uh, because it will dry up a tone or two lighter. Okay, now we could continue with the mop brush and moisten the mop brush in water. Water's getting a little on the grey side now, but that's not a problem. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to put in um, a little colour into um, certain areas of the painting um, because we've always got to be aware of the snow. Now, quite often, um, you actually have uh, quite a um, quite an area of snow on the roof. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the light red. That's light red there. And I'm going to use that as my red. It's not a real too vibrant red, but it is a little bit on the vibrant side. And where are we likely to have... Um, the snow or even the um the 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 brickwork or sorry the tile work actually revealed and i would say possibly on that sort of frontage there on the gable end um maybe could just extend a little across like that um perhaps an area here funny little blip to the to the roof on that at Willy Lots I've noticed over the years on the gable end there perhaps also something that you must be aware of and of course then you would get areas that just stay um, perhaps even an area at the bottom there somewhere in the bottom corner but the rest would have um, um, you know, it's just to suggest that there's still snow on the roof, albeit not very thick, not a dense area of snow. Right, lose a bit of that colour. Also, the chimney. Now, it's another area where you probably would see 
areas that have where the snow is actually no longer on the there possibly a bit there and a bit round the chimney perhaps just to indicate perhaps uh, not so today because obviously it's not being used but in its day um, areas round chimneys do tend not to have snow on them because obviously the chimney gets uh, warm so that's always something to bear in mind so with that in mind let's just bring that down like that let's not have barely any snow on that chimney it's nice red against the blue sky um, oh and of course the chimney breast itself and the, the stack there got to be aware that we do have um, a bush there that we won't see too much of that there we are good let's clean that brush right let's just move now to a slightly smaller brush and I'm going to select a quite a small actual in fact it's a number seven uh, Rosemary and Co uh, it, it is the the Kalinsky Sable that's a series 33 lovely brushes and uh, highly recommend Rosemary and Co um, okay now let's have a look at windows um, I'm going to use ultramarine this time we'll go in there where I've used the other blue because there's no reason why we shouldn't and I'm going to use Indian red again could have used the light red because I've used that before but let's just use those two just to ring the changes really and windows always look quite quite dark there again because of the contrast of the snow and all I'm going to do I'm going to just draw down like that try and lift off a bit better than that there we go uh, cross the top and lift off and the same with that little one there there is a window just showing there and that gives a sense that you may have some snow on the sill always a good thing to do in a snow scene to show windows like that um, that's the good thing about a snow scene you've got very little to do um, I'm going to add a bit of cadmium to that to get a green colour cadmium yellow because there is a shrub here but of course it's got snow on it that's part of the hedge actually so the top of the hedge would have snow where it overhangs but in the lower area obviously you wouldn't get any snow so that is how you you show um, a um, what was a sort of almost an evergreen um, area now to that I'm going to add burnt sienna just on the edge of that because I'm looking for a warm sort of for the hedge you need sort of a color that shows the twigging that's what I'm looking for there again not too much on the brush that's why I've used a smaller brush uh, and um, oh we've got an area there and it's still a little bit I'm just putting a little bit just removing a little bit onto uh, paper a kitchen towel there we are and this way you get a fair less snow on these shrubs I'm going to add a bit of red to this one just to ring the changes give it a little bit more there like that um, and the snow will be revealed when we put shadow in really there's a shrub that stands up there too and a little bit along the front there uh, yeah a little bit there trying to get a feeling of quite a bit of snow um, a bit more sienna as we come forward because I want to show uh, a little bit on the bank where we've got sort of varying bits and pieces going on there um, let's just add a bit more of that on there like that and just some stuff standing up and this is where we've got to be careful we don't want to get too 
uh, too fussed really with all of this um, foreground uh, business um, because um, uh, once you start too much of this fussy work then um, it can get rather um, rather uninteresting really it's just too fussy you know and I always tell myself that every time I paint because um, it's quite important that um, you know that I I remember that as well because it's not it's it's so easy to overdo these sort of areas really um, and if you're in danger of that you need to use a bit of restraint there we are brilliant that's perfect now I'm going to use burnt sienna now slightly darker for the feeling of um, darker twig areas on the um, on the trees and just be a bit careful I'm just gonna have to start further down yeah that's okay so you come up like that because this is the twig areas that haven't got snow on them see the way I'm doing that just to give be a bit denser in the lower area we'll put the branches in later and I'll do some lower work on there shortly so a little bit here too Ooh, a bit too much water in that yeah, there we are got away with that just about need to come out of picture there that's it just about got away with that near my mixing palette I've got that quite close because I want you to see that really so that's right in the lower area I'm going to add a little blue to that because I want this to be less intense particularly in the lower area here because obviously it wouldn't be as much snow if it was under a tree and around that sort of area so see how I've added more blue to that to, to make it darker and denser there and I'll do the same this side a bit more water into that a bit more blue and quite a bit of blue in this because I want that to um to remain quite dark picking up the side of that still just scratching across trying to keep the feeling that we do have snow in amongst that but not so much in the dense lower area a bit more brown there a bit more burnt sienna and then with this slightly bluey I'm going to then gently tease a little bit of that don't I? go too dense with that look at that that is the next stage Good. Well, we've got two more stages really um, to go. Uh, it's the final detail because it all looks a bit muddly at the moment. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm losing this a little bit. But you're not. You know, it's, it's, you, haven't, you haven't shown certain areas. Now, I'm going to use a, another Rosemary Co. This is a number six, series 344. Um, now, this points well. Could use a rigger, but um, I'm using that. And I'm going to use, um, right, going to use Burnt Sienna, that's what going there, with a little Windsor Blue. Not too much Windsor. Any dark brown would do it, really, even Burnt Umber. And it needs to be fairly dark. And first thing I'm going to do is to show where the trunk, where this trunk would actually break out in amongst the... Um, the snow areas we have to be a bit careful because if we show too much of the branch too many branches then obviously it looks as if all the snow is behind the branches which is obviously not the case so take a nice branch off of the lower area there that gives it a bit more of an authentic sort of feel there we are and all of a sudden, beginning to get that feeling of a bit of undergrowth in there, two dark areas. 
that's the, the, the beginning of that tree. This one as well, uh, we see it in the lower area, there like that. And then it will break out, another area seen there, and possibly another area seen there. And we can have a branch coming from that, can have a branch coming from that one, just breaking out there, just breaking out there, just pick up a bit more colour. Um, it's just going to make the tree look like a tree, really, you know, um, which is a bit of a simplistic way of, of stating the fact, but um, there's another one there, I think, so let's put that in. It's just a bit simplistic, I know, but that is basically the principle, you know. Not going to put any branches on that one, that's further back, that's behind the... Um, the cottage well behind there's one or two little shrubby areas there and of course this shrub here may very well have one or two little hints at branches and little shrub areas there that one one or two little touches there like that a little bit darker here around these lower areas perhaps a little darker there where there's some little touches of dark colour that's not got any snow on it really and then we come into the foreground um, using burnt sienna now and we're just picking up along the edge here and there pick up a bit more of that colour because that's where you'll find that there's very little snow because obviously as you get in near the water's edge the snow is no longer there so you see a little bit of the water is probably a temperature or two higher than the 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 um than the bank so obviously the snow mounts there we are and then we go to the bit of greenery perhaps still a little bit of greenery left in some of these uh, rushes perhaps a little bit here like that a bit more bolder brush strokes because they're somewhat nearer to us that's it now just going to put the there's a, there a little bit of fencing that runs around here like that and then there is a gate been through that gate um, many times and then come to the edge there's another gate at the side there there we go Good. Let's analyse what we've done and uh, virtually there for shadows. Now I don't want to completely rem remove the, the lighter areas within these trees, but I do feel that we could do with one tone darker. So I'm just scratching across the surface. So that with this, it's Burnt Sienna really, with a touch of Windsor in there, just to try give that sense that it's quite dark in places, which it, which it is really, you know, uh, there's quite a lot of snow, but that's quite dark, just going to pick up the corner of that building, it will show later on when we come to put in, uh, that's better, there you go, we've obviously got to put in, these are the, 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 the areas of, um, of twigging that, that hasn't got snow on. So we need to show that and just clearly define where the tree finishes. There we are, that's better. And that just gives us that additional sense of, of, sh of um, let's just sort out the side there. Need a, in an edge down there because when I take off the outside edge you'll you want to see a little feeling of at the edge of the painting it just frames it really and uh, it's going to be a little bit darker down that gable end because that way it then shows up that gable end a bit, a bit better good okay let's just Sneak in a fennel of a, a fennel of a track. 
coming out and going away. There we are. It goes off to the cross section there. Good. It's one more thing. It's always one more thing. Um, window frames. Pick up a bit more colour. Um, going to just notch in. Um, just forgotten about those wood areas, wood beams, and cross sections underneath the seal, across the top, and under the seal. Just watch perspective. There you go, under the seal. Perfect. It's shadow time. I always say about finishing touches. Well, here we go with these. Just a dark brown. And um, where shall we have these little finishing touches? Well, uh, on the gable end there, perhaps it may just help to show a little bit of that. May help on the on the side there as well. One or two little overhang tile work. So a little bit there, a little bit coming down there. Just help to sharpen up those corners. Uh, don't think it hurts really. The snow is there, so that's not a problem. Um, oh, and of course we've got the gable end here, so that's another area where you may see a little bit of the tile work and underneath there. Not the other side because it's already shown up. Um, one or two little touches for the ridge tile along the top there. Not sure whether we'll see much of the ridge tile because of the just a little hint oops a bit heavy let's lose that uh, so it's useful to rub off with the finger if you do um, have any major problems um, and um, yeah one or two little touches along the base of these bushes two little touches there perhaps the base of that bush in the shadow area just just sharpens it all up really oh and along the bank there it's always nice let's let's go in with one two little touches along the bank where it's really really dark against the water's edge it's quite quite a thing that you do see if you study that uh, little bit in the base there base of that shrub just helps to sharpen that up let me just show a little turn on that not sure sure that that's quite worked but there you go we'll leave that at that um good and perhaps the odd darker touch with the point of the rosemary and co brush because it's always nice still a little damp that mixer that's worked out well and I'll just rub that away don't want too much there one or two dark areas standing up into the water as well I've marked that water with my hand which is not ideal so let's stand some reeds up there then just to cover that over cover over my mistakes good well I'm quite um, quite happy with that it's worked out quite well it gives you an idea how you would actually treat um, a snow scene that's really quite complicated you know it's not um, it's not easy but um, I'm gonna allow that to dry and then I'm gonna take the surround off and uh, sign up well there is the pretty much the finished article all I need to do really is just sign it and I, as I always say recommend you sign all of your work doesn't matter whether you think it's good bad or indifferent I always sign up because one day you could be famous
There you go. Clean the brushes thoroughly. And allow those to dry. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, and you've not already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, you'll get notifications when I upload more videos. Happy painting, and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you for watching.